Hello everyone, and welcome today to part 4 of Mont Saint Michel. Today is going to be the last build episode of this mini-series here on my channel. And yeah, uh, it's been I've, a whole lot of fun. I've really enjoyed building uh, both like on a small scale, you know, focusing on something that's actually you know, reasonably easy to finish. Uh, that's something very difficult to do in this game. You know, building a city usually halfway, three quarters of the way through or whatever, you know, craps out on you, won't open, won't load, whatever it may be. Stuff like that always happens to me, and I know plenty of other YouTubers as well. So yeah, it was very nice just for once being able to finish something. It's, you know, uh, very, very satisfying. And but also just, you know, a different type of build for me, you know, nothing, I've never done anything like this, a uh, French city, an island, uh, <laughs> whatever you want to call this, uh, yeah, very unique all around, really, so, uh, appreciate everyone who uh, stuck around for this short mini-series, uh, I know my view count was down a lot. Which, uh, I mean, I didn't mind, I understand it's, you know, not everyone's cup of tea, this super small, super detailed type of thing, but nonetheless, thanks to everyone who were watching all these episodes, and hopefully it's going to be as satisfying for you as it was for me seeing uh, the finish and the end of Mont Saint Michel. But, so anyways, for today, we are finishing obviously the entire build, but that is going to be uh, the medieval village uh, which we are working on today. That is all that we have left to finish. Um, there was parts uh, around the bottom part of the island here that I did off camera, uh, partly just because I didn't feel like recording, which uh, kind of, I guess it's kind of bad considering that's the point of these videos, recording and showing you guys the builds. But that was mostly just because what I was building, which was more of the entrance side, so uh, to the left of this area, you'll see later in the video or at least in the cinematics, but uh, it was very monotonous, very tedious, uh, laying down networks, uh, wall networks, uh, dealing with just a bunch of crap that would not have made for uh, good viewing pleasure, such as this small area here where I, uh, like there a second ago, I had to raise the elevation in order to place down that wall, which I quickly deleted, but uh, uh, that, I had a lot of that in the off-camera area, just because working with these networks, these walls, uh, is, at least the way I'm doing it, is just a ginormous pain. Uh, they don't let you place the walls at a high elevation, which considering I'm working with such a range in elevation and heights, it was just a nightmare and just tedious work just trying to lay all these things down and uh, raising up elevation to, play up the, to plop down the walls and then lowering elevation and trying to find where the heck the nodes and stuff are amongst a bunch of props and other nodes. Yeah, it was a bit of a disaster. Well, not a disaster, but at least a, a nightmare. A disaster for recording and making a video out of, for sure, which is, again, more or less why I decided to film off camera, just because it would have been probably not the best uh, uh, for viewing as a viewer. But uh, not to mention, I got a new chair. At least I switched with my brother who wanted to try my chair out, and uh, it's giving me just neck pain, kind of just sitting too long playing the game, which is why I was a little delayed on this episode. I wanted to get it out sooner, but I just couldn't sit down and, you know, work for hours at a time without my neck and back just kind of getting screwed up, so I definitely had to piecemeal this 
uh, episode together a bit, which, yeah, uh, on, not only delayed by a day or so, but so it's not too bad, but uh, nonetheless, it is here, uh, work through the pain, of course, uh, to release the video, and yeah, uh, it's, it's going to be a lot of work here that you're going to see, uh, a lot of still laying steps and stairs, which I've done for the past, or really honestly, this entire mini series, just a ton of stairs, but uh, yeah, uh, we do move on later in the episode to uh, building more of the actual village, whereas this is more or less detailing the cliffside, uh, the, which connects the village to the like middle tier area, which uh, is kind of a bit of a daunting task, just seeing this very tall cliff and trying to uh, seamlessly just connect the lower part to the middle part and uh, with such a vast terrain difference. Uh, I, I did a small bit of that off camera, not too much though, but uh, yeah, some of that was necessary just because it, it was just again tedious and a lot of trial and error trying to figure out what looked right and what, you know, just what looked was more or less what I was capable of doing with the game itself. But uh, anyways, this particular area here where we have uh, the village at the bottom which borders the seawall and then uh, the middle tiered area on the, up on the cliff, I have a little building there. Uh, there's a pretty large space here which uh, more or less just happened. I wasn't trying to do that because in real life location uh, it's much more squished uh, pretty much just the village there pretty much backs up straight to the cliff there with that building up on top but uh, considering I had so much room there I just uh, laid a couple different tiered levels um, right here I just do I guess a back restaurant area I suppose just tables and umbrellas for the tables and then above that it, I do like a garden type thing which I don't believe I do right now I believe I revisit it later uh, uh, just trying to make it look a little more than just trees and bushes up there which is kind of easy to do when you know you're making something up not something that you're viewing on Google Earth because like I said I had a lot of space there so I definitely th uh, threw some th things in there that didn't necessarily belong there, but it is what it is. It turns out fine But as I said, I revisit that in a second to place down like a garden looking type of thing there, but yeah, anyways I believe now we start to get more into the village if I'm not mistaken I very well could be I do kind of tend to bounce around. I know uh, some people probably don't like that type of build or that type of build strategy I guess bouncing around not finishing one thing at once but I don't know sometimes when I'm building and just ideas pop up in my head of just I'm like well I want to I want to do that first so I don't forget about it uh, you know the second it pops into my head that fresh idea I kind of just want to uh, finish it and then go back to what I was doing just so you know I don't forget or don't you know whatever it may be uh, that's how I tend to build, but others definitely prefer to finish a certain area and then move on, and then finish another area and move on. But, uh, different building strategies, I suppose. But, uh, either way, uh, I guess no matter what, uh, the same end product, so I guess the only big difference is how the, you know, how it makes for viewing pleasure, whether, you know, bouncing, I, I always imagine bouncing around isn't as easy to watch, as easy to follow. But yeah, I, I try to make a conscious effort sometimes to try and you know, stick to one thing and not bounce around too much, but that really doesn't happen. But none of you have complained, <laughs> so that's nice, and yeah, so not, not gonna uh, probably change it more or less just not because I'm not trying, just because I probably can't, just that's how I build. But anyways, here is the little garden area that I mentioned, uh, just dividing it up, making it look like you know not necessarily like a like it's not really connected to anything there's no access points there's no gates there's no stairs going into it uh so i mean if you look closely it's just kind of sitting there it doesn't really look like a garden i guess but from a distance 
Uh, I place a tree there. I place some flowers, so they, you know, maybe you know, flowers, vegetables. I, I don't even know. But from a distance, you know, you can make whatever you want, really. Uh, and then on the the next patch there to the right, uh, I just lay some just a gravel patch, just to look like it's maybe a farmed area that hasn't been replanted or you know something like that. Uh, you know, you can you can more or less make it. Uh, what you will, you know, that's one thing about not necessarily defining something strictly is, you know, the viewer can more or less make it, you know, whatever they want when they're viewing it, but anyways, moving on, now is when we actually pretty much just finish up the medieval village here, uh, I was able to do this pretty quickly, uh, especially relative to the rest of the builds. Uh, there weren't really any terrain differences. Uh, there's one right there that you can see very small and then there's a very very small one at the other end which I started on this end rather than continuing from the other side which I was building previously and I did that just because I started deviating a bit on the other end from the previous episode uh, I started deviating from what uh, like the real life location looked like. Uh, it wasn't necessarily intentional. I was, I was just building, building, laying different, you know, pavement surfaces down, walls, and then it just more or less happened. I uh, had a uh, uh, upper level that didn't really exist or doesn't exist at the real life Mont Saint Michel. So rather than continuing that. I figured I'd start on this side in which I have the terrain level which is pretty much at least on the far left side of the medieval village is pretty much just right uh, up against the seawall more or less level with the uh, water level at least it appears that way but uh yeah so I figured I'd work from the left and then go to the right side and find a way to you know connect the elevation differences which was very easy to do once we actually work our way over there but uh anyhow uh, so as I said this is the final episode of the mini series and that means we are gonna be returning back to Berlin Noir and can't wait to get back to building uh, Berlin in 1929 uh, if you happen to subscribe recently uh, having viewed, you know, this miniseries Mont Saint Michel, this is not my main thing. As I said, it's a miniseries. This is the fourth and final episode. But normally, I build in uh, what I'm calling Berlin Noir, which is just the city of Berlin set in 1929. So, uh, just a bunch of historical builds, looking at old images, old maps to try and recreate Berlin in 1929 so yeah we'll be soon returning to berlin and i have a very cool announcement about berlin noir uh the there is going to be a guest build uh from ping yao another fellow youtuber that i love his stuff i've mentioned him a couple times because i definitely do uh, take some ideas and inspiration, especially uh, I've, like I mentioned in the previous episode, his stuff with PO is pr pretty awesome. So I've I've learned more or less uh, the basics of PO from his videos, which I'll link his channel in the description and try and pop up a card here in the top right if I remember to do so. But uh, the next build of Berlin Noir is going to be on his channel. When exactly? That's still to be determined. Uh, but definitely within the next two weeks for sure uh, we'll figure that out and it's I'm gonna keep a surprise exactly what it is he's building I've seen some screenshots of it the final product and yeah it is yeah you, you guys are gonna like it that's for sure so until that video is released go ahead and check out his channel he's very well deserving of many more subscribers uh, he has a couple cities going right now both heavily detailed cities, um, you can honestly call them PO cities <laughs> to some extent because 
yeah, he loves his procedural objects. Uh, that's what, uh, more, <laughs> I don't know what else to say about that. But uh, yeah, go ahead and check out his channel. As I said, link to his channel is in the description. And stay tuned to his awesome contribution to Berlin the War in the coming weeks. So, anyhow, moving on from that. This, uh, more or less just not much remaining in the video as far as, uh, you know, different type of buildings. Uh, just a lot of these medieval style buildings. One unfortunate thing that, you know, I couldn't really do anything about, given the number of assets on the workshop that are, you know, themed and from the appropriate era with this medieval style is, uh, you know, uh, French architecture and uh, just also the architecture on Mont Saint Michel. You know, uh, roofs are usually colored blue. Uh, there's a lot of blue on Mont Saint Michel and also just France in general. I mean, especially Paris. You know, you look on a map, there's just a ton of blue roofs usually, or at least shades of blue, gray, stuff like that. But as you can see, most of these roofs are not blue or, you know, some shade of blue. Most are kind of that reddish, well, not terracotta, but, uh, you know, that type of color. Which, I mean, it's not a big thing, it's not super important, but I definitely would have liked to have had more roofs that were color blue, because it, it definitely does keep more with the theme better. I tried to use as many as the buildings that I did have with blue roofs, just the problem was a lot of those buildings with that colored roof were kind of shorter. They were, I guess, stubbier buildings, whereas I often needed buildings that were longer and narrow, which, like, right over there in the background, uh, the buildings that are along the seawall. I needed those to be long and narrow, which is just uh, how they are in real life. So in, in order to copy that, I needed uh, just those long, narrow buildings. And with a few exceptions, like this one here is pretty long and narrow, and it has a bluish, grayish colored roof. But yeah, with a few exceptions, they were all not colored blue, their roofs. So yeah, I tried to incorporate kind of clumps of blue buildings. Like right here, I'm trying to stick with some blue roofs just to try and give it some realism. Because the way I see it is oftentimes, uh, maybe not necessarily in Europe, uh, I don't know, I'm not too familiar, but you know, in the Western United States, when you have housing and you know, neighborhoods built not next to each other around the same time even just there's like different developers and just you know stuff like that so even though the houses may look almost identical from like an aerial aerial view you have slight variations in roof colors so <laughs> it's probably inaccurate and not really applicable to something like this but as i was building this i was just trying to keep a you know note on clumping together different styled or different colored roofs just with that idea in mind that you know, when, perhaps when these were being built, you know, hundreds of years ago in the medieval era, uh, these were the, you know, supplies and materials available. So when the first houses were built, perhaps they were done so with the blue roofs. Then years later, uh, more houses and commercial buildings were put up and they were done so with, you know, the available materials at the time, which were then the red roofs. So that was more or less my thinking. Again, uh, it's probably not super accurate to something like this, but yeah. Regardless, let's I, let's just go with that, I guess. Uh, but anyways, yeah, that's a small detail nonetheless, and I'm sure most of you would not have noticed really or said anything about it unless you were a ginormous, you know, Mont Saint Michel nerd or you know, frequent this, uh, beautiful island regularly, but anyhow, um, uh, a lot of the detailing done, uh, you know, in the medieval village, I did so off camera, uh, like placing down benches, lights down that narrow alleyway, uh, a couple like, uh, like 
commercial booths, I guess you could call them, uh, like flower tables and just general little market tables, I guess, where people would go buy their gelato or you know, whatever a tourist would purchase on this island. But so as we are approaching the cinematics, I do want to say while this is the last build episode, next week I will release just a purely cinematic video, some music, uh, just a bunch of detailed cinematic shots for you all to enjoy. Uh, along with hopefully a special build from Ping Yao as I mentioned and Berlin Noir. So anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this mini series. I had a ton of fun building it and I will see you all next time.